Hello everyone and welcome back to Tomorrow's and Beyond in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. In the previous video we had some issues with power. We decided to launch Distrust but it has not arrived at our station slash ship yet. I have called it the St. Louis, I've renamed it. And that is because I'm going to go with the locations listed in the song Route 66. Um, so there's St. Louis, there's Joplin, Missouri, there's... I don't know if I'm going to do an Oklahoma City, maybe. Amarillo, Gallup, Flagstaff, Winona, Kingsman, Barstow, San Bernardino, and such. So, uh, yes, so it is the St. Louis. We'll go with that naming convention, odd as it may seem. Uh, yeah, that is what I decided. I have to have some sort of naming convention. I couldn't keep it as NTP Hab Ship forever. So, anyway, let's hope it actually works and deserves the name. Right now, the Lynx spacecraft is hovering away from it. Remember, one of our Kerbals perished inside because of a lack of power. Uh, the other is in the Lynx spacecraft and waiting. So hopefully we can get everything sorted out and back together again. But after all, this was always a test to see whether the Kerbals could survive in there. And it is suspicious because the... Two vehicles independently have power. So why they didn't have power when together, I have no idea. Nope, there they are. There's the Lynx and there's the St. Louis. Okay, but we have to sort of have a place for this in between the habitat and the tank. So we're going to have to separate these two off now, which is tough. And I'm sorry it's in the dark, but here we are. Okay, just stay there. This thing is missing a few of the thrusters, so it's complicated. Alright, we have our two bits separated. Okay, lining up. And going towards it. Okay, yes, we have connected. Okay. Uh, let's bring the tank back over. I'm going to just kill rotation here and have the other side, the hab side, dock with it. It's too inconvenient. Oh no, we lost comms. Just right there. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay, hopefully they'll dock. It's getting a little bit off though. Nope, they bite. Well, we'll just wait until we get more comms. Gosh, we probably ought to do something more about that. But nobody wants to see a commsat launch. Okay, we've got comms back. It wasn't a big gap or anything, but obviously detrimental in this case for... I mean, not detrimental, detrimental. It's not like they exploded or anything, but caused problems. Just enough time to cause problems. Okay, we have docked. And now we can extend our solar panels. Cannot deploy while stowed. It's not, it's not been stowed. Okay, we'll have to go to, let's see, let's go to tracking station and come back to it. Okay, can we please extend the solar panels now? Well, Activate. There we go. The solar panels are a little bit weird because of KSB Interstellar. That's why it says activate receiver. But anyway, we are recharging at a prodigious rate. The Lynx is still in render range. We will try and bring Elster. Elster is probably traumatized uh, by the death of his comrade, but um, we will try to uh, bring Elster over. Let's make sure this thing is controlling from this port. The whole thing is depressed because of the emergency situation that we had. That's a little bit sad, but... Okay. Elster coming back in here. Okay, lining up. Let's try and get the grand view of this. 
See, that's what it looks like, actually. Maybe we can turn the box off, too. Well, we are out of comms, but we are in a crude vessel now. And the other side is just holding, so... Should be okay. Ooh. Okay... Okay, we have connected. Uh, I didn't quite line up and roll, but that should be alright. We are recharging. Alright, well, let's get Elster over there. So, I did get rid of the blurring, I think. During EVA. Oh, well, that's pretty blurry, though. Oh, well, this is an EVA, though. Leave seat. Okay, okay, see, so Elster's the longer like that. Open airlock, yes, that's what I wanted to do. Uh, that didn't seem to do what I want. Oh, that was the hab. I want this one down. That's what I want. Oh, don't get hit by it. Oh, you got hit by it. Okay. He doesn't have much electric charge for some reason. I haven't fixed the Z fighting yet, but anyway, at least I fixed the blurring. Okay, so Elster's gonna go into one of these. It's amazing how broad the Kerbal heads are, by the way. Anyway, um, so it's recharging. Let's just make sure nothing untoward happens during the nighttime side. And then we're going to probably boost this up using the Lynx spacecraft. Okay, so nighttime side, daytime side. Nighttime side seems to, uh, seem to bring it down to 130,000 altogether. We aren't necessarily optimally oriented to the sun right now. But we're definitely gaining overall. And there we're maxed out now. Okay, what does Kerbalism have to say about our Kerbal? Only 2% stress, uh, which is very low considering uh, Elster has witnessed the death of a fellow astronaut um, or Kerbonaut. No CO2 poisoning, no radiation. We should probably leave Elster up here for a little bit though. Let's go to the tracking station. Oh, let's boost Elster up to a more normal orbit. This is very low for a station. So let's just get the whole station higher. So let's control from here for the pod. We'll only use the pod's engine. 120 tons here. I am not expecting to add more habitat space. Putting the whole thing in a higher orbit will probably also help communications with it. Of course, that's only relevant when there isn't somebody on board. Uh, there, uh, We don't have Elster's portrait while he's in the cabin. Privacy, I guess. I just didn't create the IVA view for those yet. Because they were originally passed through, you could originally open the doors and sit inside. So, different sort of situation. But... Since we needed something that would be properly protective of them, just in case the pass-through system was jeopardizing them, I decided to make them non-pass-through. That didn't seem to save them on the electric charge, though, but that's a whole other story. At least now we've got big enough solar panels to satisfy everything. Okay, and we're just going to circularize up here. For our first habitation of this, I think we'll we'll time warp for two weeks and see if everything holds out. That'll be good enough for a moon trip, without basically a refueling trip to the moon. Okay, that's good enough. I, I want a one hour and 33 minute orbit. There we go. Okay, so yes, let's go to the tracking station and see what happens to Elster after two weeks. Especially when we're not paying attention and Kerbalism has to sort of automate the the results. So we have Elster at 2% stress. Time warping. It is May 23rd. We need to proceed anyway. We're behind the times. 3% stress already. 
uh, fatality, was burned alive. Um, see, now, I'm going to Alt F4. Okay. <laughs> that, that's not right. Okay, it looks like a very quick Alt F4-ing has saved Elster. We are before I started time warping for the two weeks. I'm thinking maybe I should turn off the electric charge thing on Kerbalism where it kills Kerbals for lack of electric charge. Maybe that would be better, but let's try and set up persistent rotation and... about. Well, I don't know if persistent rotation works right with Kerbalism. Maybe not. It seems to say electric charge is for a few years. Why it's going down when we orient... Well, because the solar panels haven't adjusted yet. So let's just do that. Hopefully I'm right about that. Okay, and persistent rotation needs SAS mode. Okay, well, it's saying perpetual or many years now for the electric charge. So let's try this again. Hopefully it won't kill Elster, but I swear if it does, when we're oriented like this and we have pers uh, uh, persistent rotation on, um, gotta disable the electric charge thing for Kerbalism. There's just no way we're going to get anywhere otherwise. Okay, so keeping an eye on Elster. Uh, look, look, the, the electric charge, now it says only one day. I'm just gonna have to disable it. I mean, uh, how can we get... We'll have to time warp in the tracking station for long-term missions eventually, right? I mean, I guess we could follow them, but eventually we'll have multiple missions going to places. And we can't follow all of them. It's not right that it knocks down the electric charge like that. Climatization is 13 per second, it says, but the solar panel is only 15. I don't know how it, the climatization is 13 per second either. Let's take a look when we go back what the numbers are like. But See, when, once we get back here, the solar panels are generating more. Now, on the nighttime side, that's got to be a problem. If the climatization is really 13 per second. Now, but when we were actually time warping out here, it ended up balanced. Oh, maybe it's uh, depleting the megajoules. Because with KSB Interstellar installed, maybe part of the problem is just having KSB Interstellar and Kerbalism. But we'll be using ion engines eventually, so I want KSB Interstellar for that. Uh, yes, it's depleting the megajoules here. We have a store of megajoules that are feeding into our electric charge during the nighttime side. Maybe that's something that Kerbalism doesn't understand. If we're going to end up turning off the electric charge function of Kerbalism, I want to justify it. So, yeah, we'll... I mean, the next thing we want to do is send... Uh, another ISRU lander over to the moon, and we can't do that if this is going to be a problem. We've crossed the radiation belts a few, t few times, but uh, radiation is still zero. Well, I'll just time warp with it for two weeks. We're gonna bring Elster back down, then we'll proceed with the other missions, otherwise we'll be risking Elster. Incoherent behavior. See this incoherent behavior thing? probably means that exactly what it says. It's just not calculating things right. Okay, well, I've time warped the long way for two weeks here. Uh, we had to do it at this level of time warp. It's not really times 50. It's uh, times a thousand, but it took a while. And Elster has 4% stress, 0% radiation after two weeks. The power never went out. And... So, yeah, we'll, uh, my presumption is that I'm going to have to look in the configuration files and turn off the functionality for killing Kerbals when electricity runs out, but we'll have to see. Anyway, we have to poke back in here and get Elster out of wherever Elster is in. Hopefully Elster used the exercise bike even though I didn't explicitly tell Elster to. 
4% stress is a lot though, considering it's only been two weeks. But then again, a comrade did get killed, so. <laughs> you, you, you know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's reasonable. Okay, I guess we should close the hatches and everything. Ah, uh, it's not functioning. I think it is the hatch on this, this one that's probably blocking it. So we'll close this one. Yeah, for some reason, Kerbal doesn't like it when there are two of the same sort of thing going on at the same time. Okay, so the spacecraft's hatch is closed. Undock. Okay, now it's closing its hatch. Yeah, it's just when there are two hatch things on. I don't know how that works, but... Uh, when we had the problem with the hatch, the side hatch on the pad, that was the same sort of thing. It was because the shell has a hatch and this has a hatch and they don't like each other. Basically, it wasn't the walkway. Somebody had suggested it was the walkway, but we had already retracted the walkway. It was just the shell and its hatch. And then for some reason that has to be separated off before this hatch works. I don't understand it. But anyway, we've closed up and we will bring Elster back down now. And then we will proceed with deploying other things because it's pretty clear that uh, if we tried to deploy other things while Elster was on uh, this ship, the St. Louis, we would kill Elster. <laughs> so the good thing about the tremendous amount of propellant that's available in the service module here is that once we do boost up the ship to a high orbit, we can still get, get to it using this service module. And eventually we will want to boost up the ship to a high orbit. I wonder if the power consumption has got to be more with more than one person though. It's already pretty onerous. Hopefully that is just regardless of how many we put in there. But we'll have to check that out. Okay, re-entry heating. Once again, I haven't put Descent Mode on to this yet. Our Kerbals can take the Gs, it's fine. And I'm not trying to land in any particular location. Descent Mode can help you control where you land and everything, but... Um, once we start coming back from the moon, though, we might want to have Descent Mode on. 6.1 Gs here was the max. Or maybe it's gone a little bit higher than that right now. Just peek inside. How's Elster doing? Elster in the back seat for some reason. I just that just happened to be where I got Elster into. Okay, arrow cap. Oh, the arrow cap got stuck. Yeah, I think the docking port prevented the arrow cap from separating. That's a problem. And it's sort of gotten stuck between some colliders. That could cause a problem eventually. Well, looks like the arrow cap is sort of permanently stuck. Better than some alternatives, I guess. Okay, Elster has splashed down with that little bit of an issue. Let's recover. Well, we lost one Kerbal already. We got one back. This hasn't been the best sort of space program so far. Okay, so here we are with an ISRU unit launched for the moon and we are going to have to land it in close proximity to the other two. So there is still a challenge here. I mean, I know it is the thing that we have done, but I do feel like this isn't trivial here. Landing on the moon isn't so easy. It's not like Kerbin's moon, okay? It is still a little bit hard. So forgive me, but I'll try to expedite as much as possible, but it's still... Let's not trivialize this. It's uh, something that's done less than landing on a barge, for instance. Let's put it that way. So, ignition. And launch. So, off we go from Boca Chica again. And we should be through Max Q now. I mean, at least I've taken pains to try and make things look good. Okay, we're pretty well lined up as far as inclination is concerned. And 
turning off some engines and rolling. Okay, and shut down at 4,000 meters per second. Okay, separation. And I probably still have it rolled the wrong way. Oh no, they're the right way around. Very good. Okay, and we have a control unit down here. Control from here. All right, prograde, RCS. And how's our fuel? Seems stable. All right, ignition. Okay, smoother than it sometimes is. Well, we are over Cape Canaveral and we are close to making orbit here. And shut down 225 by 211. And we have 3,000 meters per second left. The lander will have to finish the burn for the moon, but more or less we're where we want to be. That's a slowish transfer getting to the moon periapsis in five days, but it should be okay. Okay, we are on our way. I'll unlock the ore now, just in case I forget again. Okay. And... Let's shift control to here, maybe that'll help as we separate. No, our node goes away anyway. <laughs> I was hoping the node would stay, but I guess not. Well, we do have control over here. I'm going to extend the radiator to prevent boil off. Or mitigate boil off, hopefully. Okay, I'm trying to do something fancy with the normal component in that burn, but that's not a good idea, so let's just go. Okay, so we have an approach to the moon there. Okay, now that we've entered the moon SOI, let's see if what we have plotted is the best thing. Or whether we should tweak it a bit. Or whether we should do a burn right now. We're at the SOI entry to see if that helps. Yeah, it's worse than I thought. Okay, let's do something right away. It'll move by the time we get there. We'll see how it goes. But let's do this correction first. That's a heck of a correction going from this orbit to that orbit. But at least it only costs 61. Okay, that looks good. Well, we should remain in communication. We'll be on the Earth side at Periapsis. Taking a look at the situation though, we probably want to fix our inclination a little bit as part of this burn. So, gonna nudge that down a little bit like that. Ignition. Okay, capture burn complete. And let's aim for a landing. It's looking pretty good. And of course, the landing location is very firmly on the side facing the Earth, so that's automatically not a problem. And at this point, I'll temporarily retract, retract the radiator. Okay. Oh, it's wiggling a bit. Ignition. Well, our path looks great though. Okay, our target location is over there. And our target difference according to MechJeb is within render range. Yeah, this sort of thing is super tense. Okay, target difference is really low now. I guess I'll keep that up. I don't know if I want it that low. Okay, switching to kill rotation. The fact that I can somehow topple anything on the moon is 
always interesting, but at least I designed these ISRU landers so that that's really, really unlikely. Not impossible, though. Oh, great. Come on. Okay, okay, I think we're down. We're down. Alright, RCS off. Radiator up. Drills. Starting harvester. Okay, and let's um, let's go with hydrogen here. Okay, we are replenishing hydrogen. All right, and we'll just plug into the whole thing, and everybody can share stuff. And it continues. So we've got one one more of these. We've got three. It is in render range of the other two. So that's all good. We'll need a lot more. And next time we'll expand on our ship. And I probably need to come up with a lander that's going to grab the hydrogen from the surface and bring it up into orbit. So I'll think about how to design that. So with that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.